In this video, we're going to be seeing how we can add difficulty to our game by timing our game, see how much time has gone past, creating checkpoints during that time, and every time we hit a checkpoint, we increase the level of difficulty, and we can also control how many checkpoints it takes to increase the number of spawned obstacles that occur. So why don't we look and see what's going on in the game right now. All right, let me bring this over here. All right, so I'm going to select my game manager, and we have a few new variables that we have uh, made public in our game manager script over here. First, we have a minutes and seconds variable that will be able to accurately display the time to the player. Second, we have a checkpoint interval, meaning every three seconds a checkpoint uh, dings or a checkpoint comes around. Okay, and then we have three modifier variables below our checkpoint time. Uh, obstacle count mod. So this isn't actually how many obstacles spawn, more obstacles spawn every checkpoint, but rather how many checkpoints have to have passed before we add one extra obstacle to spawn. So this too means that two checkpoints will have gone by and our object obstacle spawn count per wave will increase by one. So after two checkpoints, we will now spawn three obstacles. Uh, obstacle spawn mod, right here, every time we hit a checkpoint, we increase the uh, spawn rate by 0.1 second. And uh, we also have a modifier where we can also uh, increase the, uh, the wave spawn time or decrease the amount of time it takes for waves to spawn. All right, so let's see this in action. I've exaggerated our values here. Um, and by no means is this balanced unless you just want a really super hard mode. So um, as I play the game, keep your eye on a few values over here in our inspector. Keep your eye on our obstacle spawn count per wave. This will increase every two checkpoints. Uh, keep your eye on our minutes and seconds. You can see how those will add up for us. Um, our, our checkpoint interval every three seconds. Uh, I've already gone over that, so just kind of keep your eyes on those variables as I play. So you can see that the game starts off rather easy with two obstacles. The second wave hits. And there we go. We've hit about six checkpoints at this point. And you can see that more obstacles are starting to spawn. They're spawning fat sooner. And I'm quickly becoming overwhelmed with the amount of obstacles. And since we have shut such short turnaround on our checkpoints, the game gets hard real fast. But we uh, these variables right here, these four variables, will allow us to be, uh, tweak the difficulty that we want to achieve within our game. So why don't we go ahead and see how we can actually uh, achieve all that stuff? All right, so. First, we need to keep track of how many seconds have passed in the game. Uh, and time.delta time allows us to do that quite easily. That's a nice little function Unity has built in for us. Second, we need to be able to convert those seconds into minutes uh, and seconds. So something that you might be more familiar when you look at a stopwatch or a regular clock. That'll purely be for UI purposes, purely just for the player so they know how much time has passed within our game. Um, next, we will need to calculate whenever a new checkpoint dings or, you know, if I want my checkpoints to go every 10 seconds, we need to be able to calculate that within our code. And then when we hit a checkpoint, we need to increase the spawn rate of obstacles. And then we need to maybe after a certain uh, amount of checkpoints, let's say we hit three checkpoints. Well, throw in another obstacle to the mix. We'll learn how to do that as well. So back in this fresh project, we're going to go ahead and code all this logic, and we're going to start out by making a timer. So I'm going to go ahead and double click on my game manager script and open it up in Mono Develop. Okay. So we're pretty familiar with our game manager at this point, so I won't recount, recap anything that's going on. What we're going to do, though, is we're going to have to make some new uh, variables. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and make all of our variables public. So we can see them in action. So it's maybe easier to debug our code. 
And at the end of the video, we're still going to keep a uh, scope in mind and we'll go back and we'll make the variables that need to be private private and keep the variables that need to be accessed in the inspector public. But for uh, debugging purposes, let's just go ahead and make some public variables called public float game timer. All right. And then public string minutes. And then we'll do a seconds as well. All right. So these variable, this variable right here is going to keep track of our game time. These variables right here will keep, will be able to display our minutes and seconds in a string format. So purely using characters. Okay. So now we have to go to void update and we have to give ourselves some logic. We're going to be living inside of void update for pretty much this, the rest of the video here, unless we have to make a few more variables. So we already have this. Uh, if mouse button one, then we shrink. This is our uh, debug uh, tester that would shrink our boundary. Guess what? We don't need it anymore. We already have our boundary shrink shrinking through collision, so there's no reason to have that testing mechanic uh, or testing function in the game anymore. So I'm just going to go ahead and clean up my update and get it nice and clean. So the first thing we're going to do after we clean up our update function is we're going to say game timer, and we're going to update our game timer every frame by saying plus equals. So we're going to take the original value of game timer for this frame and add time dot delta time to it. All right. So that plus equals will take the original value of game timer for this particular frame and add it to time dot delta time. So you're always increasing uh, every frame, the value of game timer, by how much time has passed within the game here. All right, so now we have to figure out uh, a way to display our timer in minutes and seconds. But before we do that, why don't we go ahead and see our timer in action in our inspector here. So I'm going to select my game manager. So you can see I have a game timer variable right here. We haven't added any code to minutes and seconds, but let's just keep our eyes on this highlighted value we have in our inspector right there. All right, so I'm going to press play. And as you can see, it keeps track of how many seconds have passed as soon as we start the game. But it's not a very pleasant or easy on the eyes type of timer. I mean, we have like six decimal, six or five decimal places. And uh, if we went above 60 seconds, it wouldn't start displaying minutes. It would just keep showing 66 seconds all the way to 212 seconds. So game timer is really good for using logic within our game. Uh, but as for uh, display purposes or UI purposes, not so much. So we need to figure out a way to convert this game timer into a pleasant minutes and seconds uh, type of, of string. So let's get back into our code and figure out how we can do that. And we're going to bust out a brand new function that you probably that you might have not seen before. We're going to say minutes, which is our string. We're going to set that equal to mathf. So mathf is a uh, series of uh, functions or methods built into Unity that allow you to do some complex uh, math equations uh, really easily. And we're going to, and we have to specify which uh, type of math equation or math function we want to use. We're going to use the floor function. All right. So what is floor? Well, I'm going to open up that link in our docs and bring it right in here. Uh, basically. It will return the largest integer, uh, smaller or equal to f. So what does that mean? All right. So we have, in this uh, example, we have a static function called floor, f, float, float. So that may not make too much sense. But let's look at our examples here. So this line of code right here prints 10. So we're printing out the math floor of 10. So the integer smaller or equal to 10 is 10. All right, here's where things get interesting. We have 10.2. So remember, we're printing integers. So 10.2 is a float. What floor does is it prints the smallest integer that can go in to 10.2. So if 10.2 is our float and we're doing a math F floor on it, then we're going to print 10. Same thing here. We have another float of 10.7. 10 can go, that, that's just the highest uh, integer that can go into our value we're solving for here. 
here's another interesting one. What if you have negative numbers? Well, here we go. You see a theme here? Oh, but here's where things get real tricky. Since we're in negative numbers, 10, negative 10.2, it'll return the largest integer, smaller or equal to F. All right, so that's the key difference there, right? Negative 11 is smaller than negative 10. So there we go. <laughs> it's a little bit tricky to wrap your heads around, but it's basically just a way of returning integers from a float. All right, that's and there's a little bit more to it than that, but we'll see it in action here. Maybe we can get a better understanding of what's actually going on with this math f dot floor. So we're going to take the floor of game timer, and then we're going to divide our game timer by sixty. If I don't totally mess up on my keyboard, by sixty there. So we're saying game timer keeps track of our seconds down to five decimal places, right? Math F floor returns integers of a float. So we're taking our float game timer here. We're dividing it by 60. So if our game timer is 55 seconds and we divide it by 60, then obviously that's going to be like what? A, a fraction. It won't even be a whole number, right? So math F floor will, will turn zero. But as soon as our game timer reaches about, what, 61 seconds, guess what? 61 divided by 60, 60 can go in that to one time. Math F floor will return the integer of 1, thus giving ourselves uh, a nice whole number that will keep track of the minutes in our game. And then what we're going to do, since we're uh, kind of working with integers and floats right now, using math floor to convert a float to the lowest uh, common, uh, the lowest possible integer that can go into our game timer divided by 60. So we're using a lot of numbers here, but minutes is a string. So we have to use two string to convert it here. And this is where things get really nice. We're, we're gonna, ah, two string and then in parentheses, we're gonna say how many decimal places or how many uh, numbers do we wanna round up to? So this right here will say, okay, we want our numbers to be displayed in 0, 1, or 0, 2, or 1, 0 for 10 minutes. Basically, how many uh, digits we're going to convert this string into. And that's how we're going to get our minutes. Next, we're going to have to figure out how we can get our seconds. So we're going to say seconds equals game timer. And then we're going to use a, kind of a new uh, operation called the modulus. Modulus 60, two string, and then we're going to do the same thing, 0, 0. Hit escape so it doesn't auto-format for me. And we'll hit control and S. So what does this percentage, what does this modulus operator mean? Well, basically, we're not dividing game timer by 60 per se. That's not the value, the direct value we're going to get. Modulus basically gives us the remainder of game timer divided by 60. All right. So if game timer, let's just, let me write something here. So if game timer is, um, I don't know, 64 seconds, and we divide that by 60, then we get a remainder of four, right? Back when we were first learning division, we didn't really go into uh, long division. So to kind of shortcut through that, we just said uh, six, the one with a remainder of four. That'll go in there one time with a remainder of four. So modulus actually gives us this remainder here. All right, great. So if our game timer was, uh, I don't know, um, 61 or 75 seconds have gone by, then we would modulus that by 60. And then guess what? It would give us 15 seconds or whatever the remainder was. So let me type that again so we can see. So let's say our game timer is at 82 seconds, right? Well, we're trying to display just how many seconds are, are currently within this minute, all right? So if 82 seconds is what our game timer is, that means we have one minute, but how many seconds, okay? One minute, but how many seconds? What we'll do is we'll divide that 82 by 60, but you know what? 
If we divide it by 60, that equals 1 with a remainder of what? Uh, 22. All right. So guess what? This remainder is actually how many seconds we're into our next minute. All right. So that's a really handy way. And guess what? Modulus does all that math for us. So that's why we would use the modulus opera operation there. And that should be all she wrote for that. So let's look in our game inspector now in our minutes and seconds and see how that's working for us. All right. So you can see we have two decimal places. And uh, you know what? I need to restart this because I'm never going to make it to the one minute mark to prove that we're actually doing uh, minutes of operation. So I'm going to, well, you know what? I guess I can. I think I'll be able to make it because we haven't added difficulty yet. Oh, goodness. Maybe I did. I think this is too hard. So obstacle speed. We'll make obstacle speed two. The power, and then we'll say we only want to spawn one. That'll be pretty easy to survive for a minute. I think I can make it. All right. So while we're waiting for this minutes to tick the one to prove that our math is going right, why don't we take this time to uh, talk about how we're going to get our difficulty to work with checkpoints. Okay. So in checkpoints, we kind of have to keep a separate timer. We're going to have to keep a separate timer called, uh, what are we going to call that? Checkpoint interval and checkpoint uh, timer. Yeah, we're going to have to have a totally separate timer just for checkpoints. Um, because we're going to be resetting the time of our checkpoints each time a checkpoint dings. So we know exactly how much time comes around for our next checkpoint. So, you know, we're going to have to have two timers working. One for our total game time so we can display the correct amount of minutes and seconds. And another one so we can uh, count how many times or how many seconds until the next checkpoint. So here we're at 58 seconds. And now you can see we've gone into one minute. And then we're in the fifth, sixth, seventh second of our second minute of the game or the one minute marker. All right. So we have our minutes and seconds. We have our game timer built for the game. That'll come in handy for our UI in a little bit in a, in a, in a further chapter. So let's keep talking about that checkpoint system. Um, and we're just going to jump right into how to code it real quickly. So we're going to go back into game manager. And we have to make a whole new slew of variables here. And we're going to keep making them public so we can uh, decode them or debug them and uh, do some R do a little bit easier R&D. And then we'll come back later and adjust the scope of all our variables. But for right now, why don't we make some new public floats? So I'm going to call this public float checkpoint interval. This is going to be the amount of time between checkpoints. Okay. And then we're going to make a... Another float, and we're just going to keep it on the same line. I'll do a comma there. We're going to say checkpoint timer. This is going to keep track of, okay, the time between our checkpoints. So if our checkpoint interval is 10, we need something that can count down the time between the next 10-minute uh, checkpoint interval. All right, great. So I'm going to end that. So we're going to make some ints now. We're going to make our, uh, our modifiers. But before we make our modifier, we're going to say checkpoint count. This is going to be basically how many checkpoints have gone by, and that'll help uh, since the last one. So it'll keep a running tally of how many checkpoints have happened in the game. But eventually, when we start adding our modifier, that'll spawn new obstacles or more and more obstacles per you know every two checkpoints. Then we're going to have to keep resetting our checkpoint checkpoint count variable here that we just made to keep track of when the next obstacle spawn checkpoint will occur. That'll make more sense when we get into the practical application of that variable. And then we're going to make a, pub, a bunch of public ints. And we're going to say public int um, obstacle count mod. So this will be the variable we're saying, okay, after every two checkpoints, we're going to spawn one more obstacle. We're going to say obstacle uh, spawn mod. This will be the uh, modifier that will decrease the amount of time it takes between actual obstacle spawns, and then we're going to do one for the amount of time it takes between waves to spawn. Like that. All right, I think my spelling looks good. So those are our three modifier variables. That'll help us tweak our difficulty and uh, really hone in on uh, how challenging we want to make our game. 
So back to void update. And now we're going to actually put in our logic that keeps track of our checkpoint system for us. So why don't we go right underneath game timer. And why don't we keep track of our checkpoint timer as well. And it's going to be the same thing, actually. We're just going to say checkpoint timer equals plus equals time dot delta time. And that's going to keep updating our separate checkpoint time. We're going to keep these two guys together because we know that's where we're getting our timers updated. And then I'm going to come down here and we're going to do some, make some new logic. Okay. We need a conditional statement to see which is to see if a checkpoint has been reached. So to do that, we're going to have to compare some values here. We're going to say if checkpoint timer is greater than checkpoint interval. So basically we're saying our checkpoint interval is 10 seconds. As soon as our checkpoint timer hits 11 seconds or 10.01 seconds, then boom, we've hit a checkpoint. All right. So that's how we test to see if a checkpoint has been deemed. We're just comparing against our timer to how long we want our checkpoints to uh, go, how, how long we want them to be apart. Okay. So now we have to add our uh, difficulty or mechanical logic in this if statement that will increase our difficulty. All right, so once we reach this if statement, we need to do something to increase the spawn rate of our obstacles, okay? And to actually increase the spawn rate of our obstacles, we need to decrease the amount of time it takes between each ob obstacle spawn. So we're gonna say obstacle, what is it, obstacle spawn weight, this is going to be uh, figuring out the actual value between each obstacle in a wave. So our obstacles are going to spawn maybe a half a second apart. When we hit this checkpoint, maybe they're going to spawn um, a quarter of a second of apart now. But we can do that easily by saying uh, minus equals. Then we can say obstacle spawn mod. All right. It's, it's going to take our original value of our spawn weight, the time between each obstacle spawn. And it's going to subtract our modifier from it. And that'll give us a new value that'll spawn obstacles closer together. And let's do the same thing for our waves. Let's say obstacle, obstacle wave weight. And it's going to be the same kind of logic here. Obstacle um, wave mod. There we go. So this is also going to kind of, we're going to do a double whammy here. We're going to also uh, decrease the amount of time between waves. Um, and if you feel like uh, kind of doing that separately from spawn weight, then wait a second and you can see what kind of logic we'll use for increasing our spawn count. Or you can create a, uh, a checkpoint timer just for obstacle spawn weights and a checkpoint timer just for obstacle wave weights. You can call it like checkpoint spawn timer or checkpoint wave timer. And then you can have two if statements that manage this math separately. And, you know, you can have two different checkpoint intervals. So you can have checkpoint spawn interval, checkpoint wave interval. It all depends on how deep you want to take it. But we're going to do, um, you know, the most straightforward path. And then you can use some of these new uh, mechanics or some of this new logic to make it however you guys want. All right. But we're just going to keep soldiering on so we can get uh, done with this chapter and uh, then you can take new skills and apply them differently if you want your game to be designed a little differently. All right, so that's great. So after we've decreased our spawn times between our obstacle spawns and our wave spawns, we're going to have to reset our checkpoint timer. Equals zero. Because after we uh, ding our checkpoint right here, we're going to decrease the amount. Uh, we're going to do the spawn rate adjustment. And then we're going to say, okay, checkpoint timer, you're back to zero. So I can figure out the next time you hit 10 seconds. So it's just it's constantly repeating these intervals right here. And that is very key to make sure we're resetting our timer after we adjust our spawn rates. All right. So now we need to increase the number of obstacles that spawn after a certain amount of checkpoints. So let's say we want to uh, increase another obstacle spawn. Um, let's say we're spawning two obstacles at the beginning of the game. 
And after two checkpoints, we want to spawn three obstacles, just so the game can be a little bit more uh, dynamic and a little bit more hectic, right? So we need to keep track of the number of checkpoints that have actually gone by. So to do that, we have to revisit our if statement up here. So not only are we going to reset the timer, we're also going to update our checkpoint count by one. So every time we ding this checkpoint, ding, our timer is more than our interval, so we've hit a checkpoint. We're going to adjust our spawn rates. We're going to reset our timer so we can start calculating the next checkpoint. But we're also going to say, okay, we're going to, one checkpoint has gone by or two checkpoints have gone by, or three checkpoints have gone by. That's going to drive the logic in our next uh, line of code here. So we're going to keep track of our checkpoint count, and then we're going to uh, nest another if statement within this, uh, let's call this uh, checkpoint ding. That way it's easy to refer to which if statement we're talking about. So in this checkpoint ding if statement, we're going to nest a new check a new conditional statement. We're going to say if checkpoint count equals equals obstacle count mod, meaning if we've hit our ding, our checkpoint ding, we've added a, a one to our counter for our checkpoints. So now we're saying if our obstacle count mod is equal to three, so um, we want to say every three uh, waves, we want to uh, increase uh, the amount of obstacles that spawn. Well, we're going to compare this count to that, and it's what's going to check and see if we've actually hit our goal of three checkpoints to increase the amount of obstacles that spawn here. So we're going to say if, within this, we're going to say obstacle spawn obstacle spawn count per way that's a huge variable name plus plus so that plus plus will add one to that value so we're going to add one to the amount of obstacles that spawn per wave and then what we have to do after we uh do that math after we've added our extra obstacle to the waves we have to reset the value of our checkpoint count to zero that way we're constantly you know, same way we had to uh, set our timer back to zero. You know, we've reached our ding. Now we have to reset our timer so we can figure out uh, the amount of seconds until our next interval. Same thing. We're counting our checkpoints. We're really just counting our checkpoints until they reach the amount of checkpoints to increase our obstacle count. And then once we do that, we'll reset it back to zero. So now it'll be counting up from zero again so we can repeat the cycle again of always counting to how many checkpoints until we add another obstacle within this logic. We'll hit Control S to save. And why don't we see what happens in our game manager? We have all these new variables right here and they have a value of zero because we haven't assigned any value in our code. We're gonna leave that to our game designer to do that in the inspector himself so we can tweak the difficulty to their leisure. So why don't we go ahead and give some values to our uh, new variables here so we can see them in action. And already we can see we have too many variables than we need, and it's going to be it's kind of confusing to know what value. So why don't we just go ahead and press play. Okay. Hmm. I don't really see anything happen. But we can see our checkpoint count just going crazy. That's because our checkpoint interval, we haven't, said, we haven't described the amount of seconds between our checkpoints. Let's, so, let's do every five seconds we hit a checkpoint, okay? So we should see now that whenever our timer right here, as soon as that hits five, we get a checkpoint count. So we're at our first checkpoint. We're at our second checkpoint. And see how our, our timer is just resetting? every time it hits five right there. So, you know, it's counting our checkpoints and that's good. But our checkpoint count really isn't doing anything right now. It's not being useful because we haven't added any values to these uh, variables down below. So why don't we get in there? Let's uh, unpause this. Okay, I'm gonna zoom out. Let's zoom back in. So what we're gonna say 
is our timer and our count seem to be doing their own thing. And in fact, those will probably be private variables before we're all said and done because they're being driven by logic in our code. We have no, we're not going to have direct bearing on that, but we are going to have direct bearing on these three modifier variables. So we're saying every five seconds we hit a checkpoint. Let's say whenever we've hit, gone through two checkpoints, so maybe at 10 seconds, then we'll add a new uh, obstacle to spawn. So every 10 seconds, we're adding one obstacle because let me go ahead and just press play. All right, so let's see this in action. So our checkpoint timer is going. We've hit a checkpoint count of one. So when our next checkpoint counts hits, there we go. We've hit that two minute mark. Checkpoint count is one. So the next checkpoint, we will hit our count mod and that'll add one more uh, obstacle to us. And you can actually see that working in our game. We're getting more and more obstacles spawning as the game goes by. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we have to set some values for our spawn rates. So right now, our obstacle spawn weight is 0.4 seconds. Let's increase that to like 0.8 seconds. So every 0.8 seconds, or let's just say one second, every second, a new obstacle will spawn within the wave. And then our obstacle wave weight, let's say every two seconds, a new wave will spawn. All right, so let's say we're gonna hit a checkpoint, and why don't we decrease ah i already see a problem that we did with our code i wanted to decrease this spawn wait time by 0.1 seconds but i can't do that because i've made the spawn mod of integer value so we have to go in and we have to fix that so let's go back into our game manager up here and it looks like we want to keep our count mod in integer so let's just fix this code. So what we want to say is obstacle float. There we go. We want our mods for our spawns and our interval times between obstacle spawns and wave spawns to be a float so we can have finer control in decimals over our spawn times. So now I can say 0.1, and now I can say maybe 0.5 for waves, or every checkpoint, let's maybe say 0.2. And let's see what happens now. All right. So every five seconds, we're going to hit a checkpoint. So keep your eyes on spawn weight up here. So we've increased our amount of spawn by two. And every checkpoint, we're decreasing our spawn weight and our wave weight by these values down here. And every two checkpoints, we're adding an extra obstacle to spawn. So there we go. And now <laughs> we've definitely lost in our game here. All right. So that is difficulty added to our game. And you guys can play around with these values right here. Before we end this, though, why don't we uh, pay close attention to our variable scope? And I already said that some of these values we're not having direct control over. So we're not having control over our checkpoint timer. All right. So I got to make this checkpoint timer private. And I probably need to make the game timer private too, because that's just being driven. I'm going to keep my minutes and seconds public. So our UI functions in the future will be able to access them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this checkpoint timer variable. Let me replace the semicolon right there. And I'm going to add it on the same line as my game timer and then i'm going to get rid of that public statement so now that is private hope we got two semicolons there and our checkpoint count that's being figured out in our code for us so that can be private so why don't i take my private variables and i like to separate them from my public so i'll put them down here so they're not hurting anybody oh, i got more more okay so let's get our public and private variables together. So I'm going to select all these variables and I'm going to come up here and we'll, we'll just place them right there. Maybe I should clean up some of this white space in my code. 
keep all my public variables together. And then let's just keep all my private variables together down here. So that's my block of private variables. Here's my block of public variables. All right. And that's my block of uh, static variables. All right. Just keeping things a little bit more organized. So now in our, there we go. We don't have uh, any annoying um, timers that we can't control. We can still see our minutes and seconds, but we now we just have more control over our game now. All right, thanks for watching.